and welcome to the Palette Full Packs YouTube channel. My name is Alice and today I have the May 2023 Palette Full Premiere Pack here in front of me. So let's go ahead, open it up and see what's inside. Oh cute! So the first thing I see is this super cute sticker. It's a little black and white sticker with a little palette. He has a little beret and a little um, paintbrush in his hand and it says Palette Full Packs Creativity in a Box. Then I see these Stabilo Woody 3-in-1 crayons. So this is a set of six multi-talented pencils. They're in pastel colors. So these guys are going to work on um, dark paper and they are also kind of like, it says they're three in one. So that's because they work as a coloring pencil, a wax crayon and a watercolor. They are water soluble. So these just seem really interesting. They do also come with a large pencil sharpener so that you can sharpen them because they're super chunky. So I'm really excited to play around with these. Next thing I see in here are these two pencils. These are Creta Color Merino pencils. I got the colors Matter, Carmine, and Emerald. These are also water soluble. So these are nice pencils. You can add in fine lines with them and then add in a little bit of water if you want to soften it, or you can use these for shading and blending techniques. The next thing I see in here is this gelato by Faber-Castell. So the gelatos are these thick kind of chunky crayons and they can be used with water to blend and smudge them out. And you can make some really cool effects with this. The color I got is boysenberry, so this will be great for adding in large areas of color. Then we have these two Princeton Summit brushes. We have a half inch angular shader and a size four round. I love angular shaders. They're great for getting into little details and being able to create fine lines. And a round is a perfect all around brush. Finally in here I see the surface. We're going to get the Strathmore 300 series watercolor cold press paper. This is 140 pounds. It is seven by 10 inches, acid free. And we're gonna get 12 sheets of this. And one last thing I almost missed, we have a black Tombow marker in here. Tombow markers are water-based, so you can add water to blend and smudge them. We're gonna have a brush tip on one end and then a bullet nib on the other. This guy was hiding in there, so I'm excited to use this to add some line art or some darker areas of shading. So this is everything you're going to get in the May 2023 Palettefull Premiere Pack. We've got the watercolor paper, we have the six pastel pencils, We've got two watercolor pencils, a Tombow, a Gelato, and two brushes. So we are doing a water-based media pack today, and I'm really excited. So let's go ahead and start playing around with these. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is the swatches, and I find swatches very helpful because they really allow you to see the color and consistency of the supply. And especially with water-based media, it allows you to see how the color blends out with water as well as how the color changes. Especially with watercolor pencils, the color often gets darker and more saturated, or sometimes with other pens pens and pencils, it can get lighter. Like with these crayons, it gets more pastel when you add water. So it's really helpful to just go through and see how the the supplies work so that you know how to use them and you can develop ideas for your actual painting. As you can see, I'm adding water to the swatches so I can see how they blend out and you can start seeing some of the difference in some of the colors as I add water. Once I've done that, I decided it was time to start on the piece. So I did a loose sketch and I wanted to do this kind of face um, with a border and then flowers in the hair. And I wanted to try to combine different textures using both um, water-based media and also playing around with these crayons as a oil pastel type supply because they are multiple use crayons. So that's kind of the idea for this piece. After I did the sketch, I started out by using these crayons to fill in the whole area. I paid a little bit of attention to where the shadows and coloring would be on the face, but overall I'm just making this like pastel rainbow background without worrying too much about what is going to go on top of it. Then I'm spraying it with some water to get the whole thing damp and I'm using the large angled shader brush to go through and soften out and blend all of these different areas of color to create this flat kind of mottled um, blended surface um, that I'm going to use as the background for my painting. So I give it one more spritz of water to really blend everything out. And once it's dry, I go in with the gelato and start adding some basic shading. I'm being really loose with this. I'm not too stressed about everything. I'm still establishing this base layer and I know that I'm gonna add in a lot more detail later. So I'm being really loose and sketchy with this gelato. At this point, the painting looks really, really scary, but that's okay. You just have to trust the process. 
I spray the whole thing with water to really soften it out and then I use the round brush to go through and start smudging in the details. Again, I'm keeping this really, really loose. Um, as you can see, everything's really smudgy and messy right now. And I'm trying to just establish where some of these basic shadows are going to be, but keeping it really soft. Once that's dry, I start going in to add some more details and I started with the watercolor pencils for this. I went ahead and established all of the little details in the nose, in the lips, and this is where I'm gonna start bringing back the shape of the face and starting to add in those details and build up on top of this sketchy, loose um, background that we have created. So I'm jumping between the red and the green. I'm primarily using the red to add some warmth to her skin tone, but I did use the green in the eyes and I also used it to darken up some areas and add a little bit of extra shading to areas that I wanted really dark like the nostrils or the center of the lips. Going ahead and adding this in with the watercolor pencil gives me a lot more control because the nib, the nib, <laughs> the tip is a lot thinner and finer so I can really get in all those little details that I want. These col two colors worked really well for adding in a skin tone because I had a warm color and a cool color, so I could use the warm color to bring out the warmer areas of the skin and use the cooler color in certain areas to bring things back. Once I finally had all the details in, I went in and smudged things very carefully using a little bit of water and the round brush. You don't wanna to use too much water or you'll create a lot of bleeds, so start with a little bit of water and add more if you need to. Once I have all of that done, it's time to move on to the next step, which is adding in a little bit more contrast. I really need to get some contrast and depth in this piece, so I'm going in with the black Tombow marker. This was definitely a scary part because I'm adding a lot of dramatic contrast to this, and that can be really scary, especially when you're going in with black on something so light, but I just had to trust myself and go slow and carefully and try to take my time with the brush and I just added it in some smaller areas where I really wanted a little bit more darkness to establish kind of those shadows as well as really adding a lot in her hair just so that I could really darken it up and give it this blue black effect. Once I had all of the shadows in, I went ahead and softened it with the round brush and I'm moving in the direction of the hair stroke. So you're going to want to move your brush in the direction that the hair is gonna go to add in extra little strands as you go and to soften this up. This is gonna add in all of that nice dark contrast and you can really see um, how well it blends out and how I'm able to smudge out and create these little um, baby hairs around her face. I'm very lightly and carefully smudging the black around the eyes. I have to be really careful with this because if I smudge it too much, it's going to get really blended. And because these areas need to be a little sharper because they're the eyelashes, the nostrils, things like that, I need to be careful with how much water I apply and where I'm applying it. I'm adding in a little bit of black to the eyebrows just to darken them up to match her hair, but I'm not gonna go ahead and soften them. Then I'm going to go ahead and use these crayons. I'm gonna use the light blue to add in some highlights to her hair, and I'm gonna smudge them just using my finger. I'm gonna use the same to add in some highlights to her eyes, and then I take off the tape. I'm taking off the tape now so that when I draw in these flowers, they extend out past the edge of this kind of little border, and it creates some dimension and depth. I'm starting to add in all of these different flower shapes using a variety of colors of the crayons, and then I'm smudging and blending them out with that angled brush just to create the base of these flowers. We're gonna go in and add more detail later, and this is where I'm gonna try to use these crayons as more of an oil or dry media instead of doing too much smudging with the water because I really want to create this different textured effect. But before I do that, I do have to build up a little bit with the crayons and adding some water. I'm using the gelato to add in some darker areas and softening that up with a little bit of water. And I just use the blue on everything, even the yellow. It's going to add a little bit of consistency. Um, and I wasn't going to be able to get a dark shadow in the yellow if I didn't do this. And it wouldn't have looked as contrasty as everything else. Once I had the base layer in, I started going in with the crayons. And this I'm not going to soften. So I'm just building things up alternating between the crayons and the gelato to add in that darker area. And I'm using a lot of different colors in each flower that correspond to the main color of the flower to add in depth and variety in those colors. 
I really enjoyed the texture that this created. I think it's really interesting and provides a nice contrast to the smooth and blended texture that we got in the face. I'm really happy with how this piece turned out. I think it's got a lot of interesting mark making in it and adds a lot of um, just kind of interest to it. So I'm happy with how it turned out and I hope that you all liked this and that it's given you some tips and ideas on different ways to use this media. I love water-based media, but this pack is really interesting because you can use so much of them in different ways. You can use the marker just as a regular marker, the pencils as regular colored pencils, and the crayons as regular crayons. So you really have a lot of versatility in this pack. So this is my piece. If you'd like to get your own palette pack, then the link is in the description box to sign up. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.